if you ask me why logo animation is important, I will tell you it's important from two perspectives. From designer perspective, it can considerably increase the chances of your logo getting approved by the client. While a static logo makes sense, an animated one makes more sense. From a brand perspective, bringing logo to life through animation can connect more with the customer and make the logo more memorable and more engaging to their customers. Hello everyone, my name is Adam. I'm a professional designer animator. I started working as interim with a lot of companies such as an airline company, an app agency, and Facebook. And now I'm a full-time freelancer and content creator. My most recent projects I'm working on right now is a web animated series called Jenny, but that's for another story. You're here to learn about the basic principles of logo animation. So in this class, you will learn about the do's and don'ts of logo animation, basically logo animation's best practices. And then you will learn about the basic principles of logo animation. For this class, you will have two projects, one simple reveal and disappear animation and another one is a more advanced characters animation of a logo type or a word mark. This course is for absolute beginners in logo animation, but a knowledge or basic knowledge in Adobe After Effects is really helpful, like you know how to export projects in After Effects. So for this class, you will need Adobe After Effects, of course. You will need two free scripts. The first one is the Wake Basil and the other one is Rifts. All right, so that's it for the introduction, guys, and see you in the first lesson. Now, for this class project, we have two projects, as I said earlier. The first one is a simple logo, Reveal and Disappear. And the reason why I chose this one is to get you familiar with the keyframes, with easings, and with the speed graph. And this is very important, especially if you're just starting. And the second project will be a more complex characters animation of a logo type. And the reason why I chose this specific second project is because the techniques you will learn here can be applied to any letters. And also you can apply them to objects, either simple objects or complex objects. So what I want you to do now is go ahead and download the project from the project and resources. You will find here all you need to follow with me through the course. And you will also find the final project in case you don't know what I did or you need some help. I included the final project as well. So what I want you to do now is go ahead and download the week basal from here. And then you go to their official website and you just download it. And then you go to iscripts.com and you download the Rift script as well. You see 29.99 .29 here. Don't get scared. Just put zero and then you put add to cart. So basically you just log into the website as if you were buying something. They will send you an email with the download link and then you download it. Once you have it, you may want to unzip the file. Double click here and you will find this one, the week basal 2gsx extract to, and then you copy the file here. So this is the path if you're on Windows and this is the path folder if you're on Mac. Same thing for the Rift, you install it the same way. And then what you want to do before working with the script, you want to go to Edit, Preferences, Scripting and Expressions. And then make sure you check Allow Script to Write Files and Access Network, then click OK and you're good to go. My tip for finishing the project is just to take it easy, okay? Don't stretch yourself, just follow through with me and try to understand why we're making such decisions instead of just following blindly. So make sure you get everything ready, make sure you open Creative Cloud, make sure you download the project and see you in the next lecture where we'll be talking about logo restrictions. And this lecture will be talking about the do's and don'ts of logo animation. And basically what I mean by that is we'll be talking about logo animation's best practices, things to keep in mind while making the animation. If it's your first time making logo animation, you may be thinking, how do I come up with the plots? And a nice trick I do every time I need scenes to animate my logo is I think to myself, what's the point of this company? What does it do? So let's take Indeed, for example, and try to come up with a mini plot for our animation. So Indeed is a free service for job seekers. And what you do there is upload your CV, search for jobs, create job alerts emails, save jobs, apply to a job directly, 
And in order to do that, you need to have a degree or training or a job experience. Now that I have brainstormed all these ideas, I can go ahead and narrow it down to a mini plot from one to five events. So we want a short and logic animation because logo animation should not exceed at maximum, I find eight seconds. Okay. Some people say six, some others say 10. I think eight is, is good. So for example, I can do an animation with a degree appears, then a CV, then a job plus logo reveal. Or we can do a CV plus a magnifier looking for a job plus the job plus logo reveal. So as you can see, short and does tell a little story about the company. With that being said, in some cases, you are only required to do a minimal animation. So like a simple reveal and disappear. In that case, you don't have to worry about the plots. You only have to worry about the techniques. It all depends on what the client is asking for. Does he want a full explanatory logo animation or he just want a simple appear and disappear or a shape morph into logo? So that's about coming up with the plots. Now let's talk about best practices for logo animation. So the first rule is that you want to keep the animation between one to six to maximum eight seconds. Why? Because the animation will be used on mobile apps, on websites. So you want the viewer to quickly see the logo reveal and then start exploring the website or buying product. You don't want to hold too much time of the user showing the logo reveal. Second rule, keep the animation inside the frame or the active area. It should not go outside the borders. Again, because it will be used on many devices, phones, website, etc. So it has to stay within the active area. Third rule is that you should learn about who you are animating for. Learn things like who is the audience of this brand, what the mission of this brand, and also check their product. So your animation is aligned with the brand's purpose and mission to avoid things like doing a logo animation with meat for a vegetarian restaurant. You get the idea, right? Fourth rule, avoid insulting jokes and black humor. Unless you are animating for yourself, no one wants you to make fun of their customers, okay? A company can make fun of itself, but never of its customers. Fifth rule, don't interfere with the original logo design because most of the time you will be provided with graphic assets. And if you have to interfere, you should at least see with the customer if it's okay. So to recap everything, in this lecture, we talked about coming up with the mini plots and best practices for logo animation. So we said for the plots, you brainstorm everything you know about the company, then you narrow it down. And for best practices, five of them, Try to keep them in mind. So next, we'll talk about the basic principles of logo animation. In this lecture, you will learn about the basic logo animation principles, and we're going to see different examples of how these principles are applied to logos. So basically, they're the same as the 12 Disney animation principles, but these ones are more focused to logo animation than characters. So the first animation principle is easy in and easy out. And this is probably one of the most important aspects or principle of animation in the history of animation. And funny story actually is that when I started making animation the first time, I wouldn't apply easings because I didn't know what easings were for. I mean, I saw tutorials and the instructor was saying that easings will make the animation run smoothly, but I couldn't understand what they mean by smoothly. Like, what do you mean smoothly? But apparently I learned and easy in and easy out means acceleration and deacceleration. So you're controlling the speed of the animation. You either want the animation to start fast and, and slow, this is easy in, or you want the animation to start slow and, and fast, this is easy out, or you want the animation to start slow, then fast, and then slow, and this is easy ease. So definitely something that you should apply to all your keyframes unless you are animating robots, because robots, they move in one speed in a linear position, you know. So for robots, machine, you can go ahead and leave the keyframes linear. Next is the arc animation principle. So basically the arc principle is the visual path of an object. So instead of an object moving in a straight trajectory like a robot, 
a 12 move and an arc trajectory. Imagine someone kicking a football. The football will go up and then it will go down, creating that arc path. However, there is a rule to this principle is that the greater the speed of an object, the straighter the path will be. Imagine shooting a bullet from a gun. It won't curve unless you're in the movie wanted, but the bullet will go in a straight trajectory because it's super fast. The next animation principle is squash and stretch. So think about a rubber ball. If you toss it up in the air, it will stretch on its way up and then it will squash when it hit the bottom, the ground. This animation principle gives the illusion of gravity and we will be using it a lot in this class. Also, it can be applied to both complex and simple objects. But there is a rule though. If you stretch the object's height, you have to make sure to stretch the width equally. Okay? And vice versa. This makes for a greater and more realistic animation. Overlap in action and follow through. And this principle we will also use a lot in this logo animation class. So basically what I mean here is that... When an object moves, a part of it will move and another part will follow. We call this overlapping. Then when it comes to a standstill position after being in motion, different parts of the object will stop at different rates. We call this a follow through. So inertia basically means that a force is making you either move or stop. Now to explain this further, imagine you standing on a bus and the bus is running and you're not holding to anything if the bus stops your body will throw itself by the force of energy in this case the bus stopping okay hope this makes sense if it doesn't you can just leave me a question next is anticipation so anticipation is the preparatory action opposed to the main action for example you bend the knee before jumping so what we're doing here by using anticipation is that we prepare the viewer for what's about to happen. When applied, it has the effect of making the object's action more realistic. And finally, staging. So staging principle means that the main actions take place by turn with a small pauses to emphasize a specific moment. The scenes must be in order and must have the same purpose, guiding the viewers to the final logo reveal. So to recap everything, in this lecture we covered the basics of logo animation, which are the easy ease, the arc principle, squash and stretch, overlap and action and follow through, anticipation, and finally staging. Next we'll open After Effects and set up our workspace.